In this video, we begin a discussion of uh, NMR signal splitting by spin-spin coupling. All right, let's start to think about uh, what the proton NMR spectrum of the methanol molecule would look like. We can take a solution of uh, a, a neat methanol, okay, so methanol just by itself, and again try to analyze what the NMR uh, spectrum for uh, those protons would look like. This is methanol, CH3OH. Uh, Okay, and uh, it usually is convenient to draw the skeletal uh, version of the molecule okay, to figure out uh, what the NMR spectrum should look like. All right, we're looking at only the proton NMR spectrum. Okay, we assume that this is just carbon-12 that is not NMR active, so only uh, the protons here will be NMR active. And then uh, we e examine the electronic environments of the various protons in the molecule. Okay, notice that here we have a proton which has uh, only one neighbor that is an oxygen atom, and here we have three protons from the methyl moiety that are connected to that oxygen. Okay, clearly the electronic environment of this proton and those protons uh, uh, is different. Okay, and the electronic environment of this proton, that proton, and that proton uh, is the same. Right, so what that means is that we're going to see two signals, one due to only this proton, and the other one uh, due to those protons. All right, uh, all right so the uh, but what happened then is that the frequencies for those will be uh, something like this. That's the frequencies that uh, these signals will absorb. But this has to be corrected by uh, the shielding. And this is what is different for that proton and those protons. And that's what we get uh, two different signals. We get these uh, frequencies. We transform into chemical shifts, okay, as we have seen in a prior video. And then uh, we're ready to plot here what uh, the chemical shift with spectrum should look like. Chemical shift usually grows to the left here. Okay, so there's going to be uh, uh, two different peaks. Again, one for the proton signal and another one for uh, the methyl signal. All right, so uh, we're actually going to put here uh, the one for this, uh, the proton of the alcohol group, okay? Uh, we should expect to be something like this. And another one for uh, the methyl group, we would expect to be something like that. Okay, this is in the essence of uh, any high resolution. There's when no uh, uh, splitting takes place. Something important here is that uh, if you take the integral under the curve for the two signals, they should be uh, that integral should be directly proportional to the number of uh, nuclei contributing to the signal. Okay, so again, this is the signal due to the uh, CH3 protons, and that is the signal due to the OH proton. Okay. And again, if you integrate the end of the curve, you actually have that this should be 1 to 3, okay, uh, um, because it corresponds to just having a one nucleus of one type and three nuclei of the other type. Now, when you actually take a look at uh, these signals into a, a, a much higher level of detail, it turns out that there are not these broad signals that I've drawn here. Instead, uh, they look uh, very interesting. Those signals seem to be split into patterns that uh, we have to explain. Okay, so uh, the signal due to this uh, proton actually looks like this. Okay, it's four peaks, and the two in the middle are actually greater, uh, have higher intensity than the ones at the edge. And the signal for those CH3s looks like this. It's two signals of equal intensity. Again, if we integrate this, uh, this areas still, that is going to be one to three. Okay, but notice that this is has, has two peaks and this was one, uh, has four. Okay, so we call this a doublet, okay, two peaks. We call this a quartet, uh, four peaks. All right, so uh, what we're trying to study, uh, study here is what is the origin of this splitting of this signal into a doublet for the case of these CH3s and a quartet for the case of that age. Okay, that is due, uh, it's going to be due to the uh, uh, something that is called spin-spin coupling which again, we're going to try to study in the next uh, few videos in, in, a lot, in a lot of detail here. Now, to start with, uh, notice that the splitting pattern has nothing to do with the number of nuclei that are contributed to the signal. Okay, notice that this is a doublet, okay, but there's three protons that are contributing. So again, the fact that you have three and the number of peaks that you have there, that's not correlated at all. They're not, not, not related. Same thing happens here, right? Notice that you only have one proton, and then you have four peaks. So again, the first point that is important is that uh, the number of peaks, the multiplicity of the signal, whether it is a singlet, double, triplet, quartet, okay, does not depend on how many 
uh, nuclei contributing to that particular signal. Instead, uh, it turns out that um, this splitting is actually caused by the presence of any more active nuclei in the vicinity of the signal. Okay, so uh, if we analyze the signal coming from this proton, okay, which is that signal, it turns out that that signal is split by the presence of these three atoms uh, within a distance that is less than three bonds, or three bonds of less. In this case, it will be one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. All these three uh, protons are within three bonds of this other proton. And it's going to be the effect of these three protons that splits that into a quartet. Okay? Uh, analogously, when we actually take a look at the signal for these three protons, what happens is that that signal is split by the presence of an any more active nucleus that is within three bonds of that signal. Okay, so we have that again. This proton is going to be within one, two, three bonds of each one of these any more active nucleus, and this signal is going to split, or this proton is going to split the signal of these CH3s into a doublet. Okay. So again, this is just an introduction for how uh, the splitting, how, how we begin to think about the splitting. And in the following videos, we're actually going to uh, examine exactly why uh, this signal or the, the presence of this proton splits the signal into a doublet, why the presence of these three protons splits that signal into a quartet, and why the intensity of the signal seems to be one to one here. And here, they're different, right? You have lower intensity at the edges, high intensity in the middle.